and welcome to another video by Adrian David from Pure Electric. In this video, I'm going to be talking about transposition and showing you how to move the formula around a page. You're going to be able to do this for your first year science and principles exam for the City and Guilds 5357 or the City and Guilds 2365 exams or equivalent. The first thing I want you guys to think about is a very basic formula. The first formula is F1. D1 equals F2, D2. Now that formula is the formula for levers. And the reason that I've chosen this formula first, it's a very easy formula to begin with because everything is on the top level. Okay, and you'll see what I mean in a bit. Now, where we've got these F1 and D1, they're separated. They're not together, it's not the same thing, but in between those, it's assumed that anything next to each other is a times. So in actual fact, what we have is force one times distance one equals force two times distance two. Now, what we need to do with this, we need to get this one of these by themselves. So let's choose one. I'll choose, let's do force one to start with. I won't put it there, I'll put it here. What I want you to do is whatever you're trying to find, I want you to put into a circle or a box so that you don't lose track of it. And as you go through and you start to get a bit confused, you can refer back to what we're looking for. So we're looking for force one. That's the unknown quantity. At the moment, I've got force one times distance one. And what I need to do is I need to do the opposite of times. So the opposite of times is divide. Now, one of the most important things about this is whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So if I'm going to be dividing this side, I'm going to be dividing that side. And this is where I'm talking about everything on the top row. OK. Anything below that would then be make it a fraction. So force one times distance one, the opposite of times is divide. And I want to, to move force one away. Oh, sorry, I want to move D one away from force one. And I'll need to get that over to the other side. So what I do is to get that down here, I need to divide it out. OK. Whatever I do this side, I do this side. Like that. Now, at the moment, this formula is balanced. Essentially, it's like a set of scales. But I don't need this here. This is, this is looking untidy, because if I've got times D1 divided by D1, well, nothing's happened. So let me give you an example. If force one was 10, let's say it's 10 Newtons, and distance one was five meters, well, 10 times five would be 50. If I then divide 50 by five, well, I'm back to 10 again. So nothing's really changed. So in fact, to make this simpler to understand so you don't get confused, I could remove that, okay? Now, the second thing that I want you guys to do is to put these in steps. So we've got step one, Step two, in fact, I can do a better two than that. Come on. Step two. Now on this step, all I want you to do is clean up that formula so you can see what you've got. So we've got F1, D1 and D1 cancel each other out. And then all I do is I just write that formula out there. So F2 times D2, divided by D1. And I've got F1 by itself on one side of the equal sign. So that is the formula transposed, okay? Once you've done that a few times and chosen different things off the top line and divided them out, what I then want you to do is move on to this next step. And that is to choose something from the top line when you've got a fraction like this. 
So let's say we want to find distance two. So up here in this box, I'm going to change that to D2. Like so. And this is now what we're looking for. Now I can't get to that until I've dealt with D1 because at the moment it's a fraction, okay? So at the moment I'm dividing by D1. So in order to get that upstairs, I've got to times it out. So times by D1, whatever I do that side, I have to do this side. Let me just put this on the higher up so it's level with these, so you can see what's going on. So force one. Wherever I do that side, I have to do this side. Okay, so now I'm back to force one times D one, distance one equals force two times distance two. Again, the formula is balanced, but it's untidy. I don't need to have that in the formula anymore. So I can cancel that out. And then I can rewrite that formula. So F1, D1 equals F2, D2. And now I'm back to where I was at the beginning. Everything's on the same level. And at this point, I can now, we're looking for D2, remind myself what we're looking for. D2's here. I need to remove F2. Don't forget in between F1 and D1 and F2 and D2, they're times each other. Opposite of times is divide. So I need to divide out the one that I don't want. I'm looking for D2, so I'm going to remove F2. F2 gets divided out. Whatever side I do that side, I do this side. And then I clean up my formula. D2 times F2 divided by F2. Well, these two F2s cancel each other out. And then my formula would be, I take it up to the top so you can see what's going on. So this would be step four. I'm just gonna clean this up. So I've got F1 times D1. divided by F2 is equals D2. Okay. And I know that I've finished because I've got D2 by itself on one side of the equal sign. And that is transposition. All you do is the opposite of what you've got. Now, this is a very basic first step. This is what I want you to practice with. There are, are other rules. It does get more complicated. But this is the first formula that I want you to practice. OK, the second formula that I want you to practice from this video once you've got that. And again, just keep choosing different things off the top line and just keep tr transposing it around until you can do it easily without having to think about it. Make sure you name long number of steps. Use different colours. I've got four colours here so that I can see what's going on. If you write everything in blank, it's going to be very difficult for you to understand what happened. Something else that I suggest to you as well is that get used to writing out the steps. I know it's a bit long winded, but that way you stand a better chance of being correct because I've got sometimes B level students, A level students, or I guess that's nine, eights and nines these days come through. And sometimes they rush through it so quickly that even they make mistakes and they get angry, obviously, when they have. So if you do the steps, I know it's difficult, but at least if you get the transposition right, you stand half a chance of getting the actual exam question correct. Make sure you do it the long winded way. So whatever you do this side, you do this side and do it step by step rather than just moving things around because you're guessing where they're going. Because, again, that's another way to go wrong. Also, as well, if you write it out like this, if you do make a mistake, it's easy to look through and think, oh, that's where I went wrong and then change it, learn from it and move forward, okay? So the second formula I want you to learn
is the formula for transformers. So we're going to start off with VP divided by VS. That's not a very good V. Equals NP over NS. Now, when we're transposing, don't get too hung up on what we're what these are doing to start off with. Okay. Ultimately, we've got algebra because it's easier than moving numbers around. VP is voltage on the primary, VS is voltage on the secondary. NP is number of turns on the primary, and NS is number of turns on the secondary. But none of that really matters because all you're practicing is transposition. When you've finished moving the formula around and you found what you want, only then do you need to worry about putting the numbers in at that stage. But that's the, that's the absolute final step in this video, which is practicing moving things around. Now, the reason I'm gonna get you to practice this one for your second one, uh, second practice is because now we've got two fractions, okay? And I want you to pick something from the bottom. So let's say we're going to start with NS up here. I'm going to put NS into a circle so I don't forget what I'm doing. And I'm going to call this step one. At the moment, NP is divided by NS. So what's the opposite of divide? Well, it's times. So I need to, to get this upstairs. I need to times that out. Whatever I do that side, I do this side. Now, because they're times each other, it doesn't matter whether I put NS on this side of VP, or this side of VP, because it, you know, it doesn't matter whether you times five by 10 or 10 by five, nothing changes, okay? So at this moment, it doesn't matter. Again, let's clean up this formula. So step two. Oh, I've got NS times VP divided by VS. And that equals NP, because over here, if I take out times NS divided by NS, because nothing happens, then I've just got NP by itself. And don't forget, because it's by itself, it's above the line, it's not part of a fraction. Okay, we're looking for NS, and I've got NS over here, so I still don't have NS by itself. I can't do anything with NS until I've done VP, uh, sorry, VS because it's still a fraction. So what I need to do is I need to move this up. At the moment, I'm divided by VS, so the opposite of divide is times, because I want to get that up there. Whatever I do this side, I do the other side. And then I can clean the formula up. So I don't need this and I don't need this. Because at the moment, the formula is still balanced, but that means nothing that happens. So there's no point having it there. So step three, okay, I've got NS times VP is equal to NP times VS. Okay. Now, if you look at this, we've got everything on the line, top line again. Okay. Everything's easy to move around. We're looking for NS. So I just remind myself what we're looking for. NS is here, which means I need to move VP away from the NS because I want the NS by itself on one side of the equal sign. The opposite of times is divide. So whatever I do this side, I do this side. And as you can see, that's what I mean by everything being on the top. There's nothing below, there's no fractions. And I need to divide the VP out. And whatever I do this side, I have to do this side. Okay. Again, the formula is balanced, but 
it looks untidy. So to make it tidy, I can remove that and I'm going to put this at the top so that you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so this will be step four. And all I'm going to do is just tidy up this formula and write that up there. So I've got NS by itself because times VP divided by VP, nothing happens. NS equals, and I've got NP times VS divided by VP. Have I finished transposing? Well, do I have NS by itself? Because that's what we're trying to find. Yes, I do. NS is on one side of the equal sign by itself, so I've finished transposing that formula. What you would now do is you would put in the numbers, okay? So for instance, if we had NP equals 10, VS equals 12, VP equals 230, let's call that volts, volts, number of turns, NS is unknown, okay, we would then put those numbers in, so NP that would be 10, VS is 12 and VP would be 230 and then we would be able to calculate NS, okay? If you've got any questions, please ask, watch the next video, I'll move on to all the formulas that you guys have to understand for your first year science and principles exam and help you working out how to transpose those and move them around. It's also a good way for you guys to get used to the formula that's going to be on your formula sheet when you're doing exams. So one of the things that I suggest to people when they're doing their first year science exam, all you need to do is revise the formula. You don't need to revise all the questions, you just need to revise transposing and remember the formulas. When you go into that exam, before you've logged into the computer, I want you to defragment your, your memory. I want you to literally ask for a piece of paper and a pen, and I just want you to vomit up a formula sheet that you've practiced writing out. So your revision should just be practicing writing out a formula sheet over and over and over again until you can do it without thinking about it. You do that as soon as you get into the exam, that is going to clear your mind and enable you to then focus on the questions. Also as well, while you're going through the questions, if something else pops into your head, you can quickly make a note of that. And that way you stand a good chance of getting all the questions right in this exam. The key things are transposition and the formula. Okay. I hope this video has been of some use to you. And this is the first video in the series about transposition and the science and principles. Take care.